Holy shit, what is a new line? What the fuck is a control code? Carriage return, more like marriage return. Ever wonder why sometimes Notepad opens files that are Linux flavored looking like this instead of like this? And you gotta fucking go to Notepad++ or WordPad or whatever. Ever wonder why that happens? Let me tell you about New Lines. No, I'm not talking about New Line cinemas. I'm talking about Whack N. Whack is actually what people call backslash in the computer industry. Like when you go to a UNC path, it's whack whack, host name whack path. What is CR? What is LF? What is line feed? What is new line? What is this backslash n shit? These things are called control codes. They're just character values that instead of displaying a character, do something different. Let's say you're a news reporter and it's any time before the 1990s. You know, you get a news story on some hot new event that happens. You know, you go online, you go to Google, you Google. Google it, you look at Twitter. No, you don't. You have a teletype. Teletype writer, teleprinter, teletype, TTY. This is how we used to transfer information. If you ever heard someone say, oh, I got a telegram, or, you know, Western Union, you know, before Western Union was about sending money, they are about sending information. The teletypes are a pretty basic concept. You have a typewriter, and instead of a human pushing keys, you're getting data over uh, a line, whether it be a phone line or a dedicated serial line or whatever. You have a, 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 an old school analog line that is, you know, going between either high and low or tone and no tone or whatever you're using there. But you have a line and you're going between two typewriters and someone's typing over here and it's printing out over here. Or more likely, someone's typing over here and it's printing out in many places. Places. This is how you would get your news, this is how you would get all kinds of shit. A lot of the control characters were used to come from the teletype model 33. If you could believe it, the null character, the delete character, the line feed character, and the carriage return character were invented in 1901. 1901, that's 120 years ago almost. You have a teletype. Whether someone is typing live someplace else and you're getting it in real time, or you're hooked up to a system and you're getting news feeds like from the Associated Press, there's a couple things that you absolutely need other than the signals, the codes that, that trigger characters, that trigger letters and numbers to be typed. The most important one is null. What do you send when no one is typing? You can't just send nothing because nothing is something. In Morse code, nothing is a pause. So think of it like Morse code, except really fast, and instead of arbitrary dots and dashes, you're, you're representing, you know, bits, and those are forming numbers. And in the case of ASCII, they're forming 7-bit numbers. In the case of Unicode, it could be 16 bits, whatever, whatever you're doing. But traditionally, when there was no data being sent, you would send all low, zero, which is null now. Now, we use null these days to terminate a string. If you're familiar with a C style string or a char star, you store a string in memory and you hold a pointer to the first character of that string. So in like hello world it would be H. And then you know when you the string is over by a null character. So if you have a function that's counting how long the string is, it's counting how many addresses there are between the beginning and until it reaches a null. So out of necessity, carriage return and line feed were born. Carriage return, I mean think about a typewriter. You have a carriage that's moving horizontally as it's printing letters onto the page, and at the end you need the carriage to return back to the beginning. So carriage return is the code that would literally have the remote teletype go back to the beginning of the line. But that's not enough because then you'll start typing over the, the line that you just printed. So you also need a line feed, and a line feed tells the printer to feed the page one line. And likewise, you also have delete or backspace, which goes back. And that's more useful in live typing or interacting with computers. I mean, so many of the early computers did not have monitors. They had fucking teletype hookups. That's why even today in Linux and Unix, you see TTY. When you type who and you look at who's connected, those virtual consoles, they're called TTYs, or formerly typewriters. You also have vertical tab, form feed, all kinds of other control codes. My favorite is bell. If you think about how a typewriter works, it doesn't really have a word wrap. When you get to the end of, of the page, when you run out of paper, you're going to need to know 
that you need to terminate on a word and then go back to the next line. So typewriters would have bells that would ding when you would start to run out of paper when the carriage would get near the, the right hand margin and it would tell the person that's typing that they need to, to wrap their sentence. They're going to need to, when they're done typing their word, hit return. This bell has a control code too and the reason for that is let's say you're sending a telegram to a remote office. Well, you need to alert the person there that, you know, there's something that's coming in. So you could send a character seven, which is a bell, and you go ding, 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 ding. And even today, you could type this control code. You can open a command line in Windows and you can echo out control G, which, which prints a, a character seven and hit enter. And computers these days don't have PC speakers, so Windows will just make its, its normal exclamation sound effect. But, you know, these, these things are still around. In fact, you can actually type all of these control codes in, in the command line. In Windows, you might have to hold down Shift because some of the, like, Control M will do mark instead of actually printing a carriage return. You could literally hit Control Shift M and it'll be exactly as if you pressed uh, Enter. So back to why your files look like shit in Notepad, but not Notepad++. So it's all about how modern computers actually treat these codes, because there is no such thing as a carriage return or, or a page that's being fed through, through a, a printer mechanism. You have data that's being interpreted and drawn on the screen by varying different you know, graphical utilities are printed out and rendered, rasterized, if you will. So as computers came into existence, they started handling new lines effectively differently based on what, what their use case was. Operating systems like Multix and Unix, which now includes Linux and Mac OS, they basically got rid of the carriage return. I mean, think about it. Your, you know, your computer doesn't have a carriage. There's really no reason to care about that. The line feed tells you to go to the next line. So, you know, if you're typing up a document, you only need the line feed. You don't need, you don't need the CR, you just need the LF. Windows, in true Microsoft fashion, gives you the best of both worlds and gives you backward compatibility. It uses both a carriage return and a line feed. If you open Notepad and hit a bunch of enters, you're going to get a file that is, you know, an even number of bytes. It interprets the new line as being on the carriage return, which is why when you open a document made on Linux where there's only line feeds in Notepad, you don't get the right thing. I really want to know how much of Notepad++ is market share is specifically because Notepad fails in this one very specific, minute area. Other platforms like Commodore 64, Apple II, and the classic Mac OS would only do the carriage return. And in fact, on these machines, the keyboard, the, the enter key is called return, if you notice. Even to this day, I think on Mac keyboards it says return, not enter. And there's other names for these things too. If you do shell scripting or C style programming, you're familiar with, you know, WAC N, WAC R, WAC T for tab, WAC zero for null. So the last thing I want to bring up while we're on the topic of new lines is that there is a slight debate as to the, the nuance of whether a new line is a line terminator or a line separator. In other words, if you're typing a text file, like a config file, and you have text on the last line and you don't terminate it with a new line, does that last line of text actually get processed? And the answer is, it's based on how lazy the programmer writing the parser is. It's very easy to just build up a buffer of characters and then when you see a new line, process that buffer as a line and then clear the buffer. And if you don't stop to think about the remainder that's left over on the last line, that last line doesn't count, leading to a lot of command line utilities where their config files uh, will ignore the last line if you don't end it with a uh, with a new line, whether that be a CR and LF or a CRLF, whatever the fuck. There's a lot of protocols like HTTP and IRC where the specification says you need to end the line with a carriage return and a line feed, but in practice most of the implementations will trigger on either one of these. They really don't care if you use both. So, since you now know everything there is to learn about control codes, in the next video we're going to get into Telnet and what it was and why we still use it today for diagnostic purposes. But, if you don't fucking click that little bell icon that looks like the alarm icon on a Casio watch, you're not going to know when that video comes out and I'm not going to tell you about it. As always, I'm wearing a seatbelt, so leave a comment below. Subscribe button's red, it means you didn't click it. Smash that fucking bell to pieces. And I'm a firm believer that children should learn the ASCII tape in school prior to learning the periodic table. Let's do it.
Pennsylvania Turnpike.